football isn't what you think it is. From a secret two-point line to a billion-dollar controversy, these are 20 things you didn't know about football. And at number 20, I bet you didn't know that football mascots make more money than doctors. Whether it's Gunnosaurus Rex, Man Use Demon, or even dude dressed as a giant ball sack, these aren't just sweaty grown men wearing costumes or playing with their wooden public for no reason. They're entertaining fans because they make 400, 500, sometimes even $600,000 a year. But even that much money won't get you out of jail. Like the players who wore illegal accessories at number 19. There's a lot of things that football players can't wear. All black jerseys, banned. Any players who wear chains, get them snatched. Even Gucci headbands get players fined every single time they wear them. But no consequence is scarier than when David Beckham wore cleats designed with kangaroo leather. Because where he played football in California, their laws say owning any products made from kangaroos could have you facing a $5,000 fine and six months in jail. So Beckham made his cleats disappear. Because even he wanted to win the most expensive trophy in sports history at number 18. See, football champions are treated way more luxurious than other athletes. Yeah, NFL champs get the little silver trophy that's worth around 4k. NBA finals winners get some golden that's 13k. At least hockey's doing it big for their Stanley Cup winners, a trophy that costs 25k. But standing at 15 inches tall, weighing in at 13 pounds of solid gold and rare minerals, the World Cup trophy just became the most expensive award of any sport ever, worth over 20 million dollars. Uh, wait a minute, that's gotta be capped. Let me Google this. Holy shit, it's really worth 20 M's. Now I see why players tried cheating to be good enough to win it. And I bet you didn't know about football's banned moves at number 17. Like, you can't even give head in football. Whether it's the seal dribble like this, or the neck stall like this, neither are allowed. There's even moves where players try looking pregnant by pulling out the shirt catch, and one where players turn into animals with the donkey kick free kick. But once players kept doing all those moves and started getting injured by opponents who thought they were only trying to showboat, football officials cracked down on them and the moves were banned. Now at least vehicles aren't banned from football. Cause at number 16, I bet you didn't know that going pro gets you free cars? See, car companies are now sponsoring some of football's biggest clubs and dropping off custom whips for the whole squad. Audi's been delivering to Barcelona players and even let them speed the cars around a track. But BMW did things even more expensive for Real Madrid. Cause not only did each player get a car with a custom license plate, they got to have photo shoots with the whips, and each player got a brand new parking spot with a charging station. Now, cars are cool and all, but at number 15, I bet you didn't know that animals used to be a part of football? <coughs> Kangaroos used to hop around in games. And so did cats, dogs, even cocks. I mean, roosters. But things didn't become controversial until a football club let a grizzly bear on the field? That ceremony had football beefing with PETA because they claimed having a bear performing was inhumane. But it's Russia, so they don't give a shit what anybody says. They even let the bear come celebrate the team's win in traffic. Only in Russia, man. But only in football is there a curse that ruins players' lives at number 14. If you ever get picked to join Chelsea, do not, I repeat, do not pick the number nine. For 20 years, every single player who wore a nine has fallen off. Romelu Lukaku, a player who just had the best seasons of his career, chose the number, then instantly had the worst season of his career. Mason Mount, Lukaku! So when Chelsea announced a new star Aubameyang was filling his spot and wearing number 9, all the fans freaked out in the comments. Even Chelsea's own manager admitted the curse was real, but Aubameyang admitted he only chose the number to break the curse. They said the number 9 shirt was jinxed. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I don't listen to, to these kind of things. I love the number 9, so I, I took it and, and I'm happy with that and hopefully I can score more goals. This now, you want to know what's crazier than some ruining players' careers? A controversy that cost FIFA billions at number 13. 
I hate to break it to you guys, but the game most of us love is coming to an end. Speed, don't cry. It'll be fun. <laughs> Even though FIFA dominated sports gaming and made over $20 billion, their developers EA Sports always wanted to make a bigger and better game, but FIFA wouldn't allow it. So EA ended their partnership with FIFA and announced they're creating their own game, EA Sports FC. This game's gonna be on a whole new level. Brand new game modes, online career, customizable characters, even free roam like 2K. EA's even given us ways to unlock exclusive NFTs. So let's just hope they don't make Mbappe the cover again. Like, really FIFA? Three years in a row? Shaking my head, man. But speaking of Mr. Ninja Turtle, I bet you didn't know about one of the craziest records in football history at number 12. Just watch this. During that goal, Mbappe was clock speeding 23.61 miles an hour. That's faster than people are legally allowed to drive around schools. But comparing that to the fastest person in the world, Usain Bolt, Mbappe's speed is actually faster than Usain's average in his world record 100 meter dash. So uh, side by side, looks like Mbappe just officially became a record holder, but that was only one sprint. I already know you've wondered how far football players run throughout an entire game or an entire career. And Lionel Messi's got us covered on that at number 11. Messi installed a microchip in his cleat to track the distance he traveled during a match. Yeah, the majority of the time he was being a lazy ass and walking, but combining that with Messi's jogs, runs, and sprints had him covering around 8.5 kilometers or 5 miles in a single match. But Messi's played over a thousand matches, so that means he's ran over 5,000 miles. These football players are built different, man. Jesus Christ. But now that we're getting into the top 10 things you didn't know about football, it's about to get crazy. Like, what if I told you some of the biggest football clubs in the world tried ruining the sport? 12 of the world's top teams, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Liverpool, the Manchesters, pretty much everybody actually relevant, alright? Did something crazy out of nowhere. It was announced that all of them agreed to leave their countries and form the European Super League. Now, at first I was like, this is hype. I mean, all the biggest names in football constantly playing each other and it would be extra competitive? The winner of the league would earn $470 million. It seemed like an insane idea on paper. But within hours of the announcement, fans around the world caused absolute chaos. It's about time that somebody spoke up about the parasites in this club. Non-stop riots, fans literally breaking into stadiums. Everybody was pissed because their favorite clubs would be playing all the way across the world and fans felt that owners only cared about money the league was gonna make and not about them. But everyone wiling out actually made a huge difference. Cause within a few days, the Super League turned into a super fail and the entire move was canceled. I want to apologize to all the fan supporters of Liverpool Football Club for the disruption I caused over the past 48 hours. Damn, the fans really overthrew the football government. But that many people coming together got me wondering. Just how popular is football compared to other sports? Well, at number 9, take a look at this map. Any country that's light grey watches football over everything. So unless you're from China, Australia, Canada, or the US, chances are I know what your favorite sport is. But let's bring some numbers into this. As we go up the list, you can see the estimated fans of each sport start popping up. We got baseball with about 500 million fans, basketball with 700 million. Hell, at least hockey and cricket topped a billion. But at the very top, we got football with an estimated 3.6 billion fans worldwide. God damn, that's nearly half the population of the fucking planet. Now I see why a player like Ronaldo is the most famous person on Instagram. But I bet you didn't know there's a football rule named after him at number eight. The Ronaldo rule ain't actually a good thing though. It happened because of his return to Man United. Oh shit! where even though he was expected to be a star, his ego caused issues with his teammates. Playing like ass got him benched, and Ronaldo's contract that racked in $500,000 a week 
a whole other level compared to his teammates and made him jealous, forced the club to change their rules. Since that type of money held back the club and guaranteed Ronaldo millions, even though Man U didn't feel like he was worth it anymore, no other clubs were willing to pay money like that for him. So, Man U let Ronaldo go for free just so he wouldn't be a distraction anymore. And they also banned all Man U players of any skill or status to make over $240,000 a week by calling it the Ronaldo rule. Damn, Ronaldo really changed the club forever. But what if I told you the MLS is about to change football forever? I'm sure we've all seen crazy goals like this. By Canals. Pinballs to Rooney. Rooney sees roll out. Oh! It's in the net! Oh! But the problem is, they don't happen often enough, because players have no extra reasons to kick from that far away. Until now. Rumors of a two-point line, which would be a similar arc to a three-point line in basketball, is now being thrown around the sport. Football fans are tired of the MLS not being as entertaining as other major leagues. So adding in a two-point line not only would it encourage players to go for ridiculous highlights, it would make football games more action-packed and higher scoring. I'd finally buy some football tickets. But something I can't buy is the most legendary piece of memorabilia in football history at number 6. Nearly 70 years ago, Pele became one of football's first ever iconic players. As a teenager, coaches were already predicting he'd become the greatest football player in the world. So not only did Pele earn himself a spot on Brazil's national team, in 1958, he officially got his own rookie card. But nobody knew what this item was destined to be. Just because Pele exceeded all expectations and became a go, his memorabilia's value skyrocketed. And what seemed like just a piece of cardboard with his pick on it, became the first football card ever to sell for over a million dollars. Now, that's definitely a lot of money, but at number 5, what if I told you a football player accidentally made a fan worth 40 million dollars? This is Charlie Morgan, aka Swansea's ball boy. And his journey towards becoming a millionaire started with this play. Wow, that's inexcusable. And all cause that lil ass boy got his ass beat. Not only did Chelsea star Eden Hazard get kicked out of the game, the situation went so viral, Charlie went from only a couple hundred followers to a hundred thousand overnight. So he began using his new fame to promote his brand, and it quickly became the fastest growing and most popular alcohol in all of the UK, AU Vodka. Its luxurious look and colorful flavors made all celebrities want to put it in their mouth. Football icon Ronaldinho loves the drink, Jake Paul even got the vodka tatted, and with this vodka selling thousands of bottles per day, Charlie's estimated net worth is now over $48 million, all cause he got his ass whooped. Damn, who would've thought getting jumped would make someone rich? But I guess a better question is, who's this man's barber? What the f This is football's ugliest haircut of all time. But the story behind it is even more ridiculous than it looks at number 4. This Ronaldo's from Brazil and dominated football in the 90s. But as he became an all-time great, the expectations reached new heights, and the pressure eventually forced him into the hospital. Out of nowhere, Ronaldo started suffering from seizures as well as devastating injuries, but doctors couldn't explain why. So they cleared his return to football because the 2002 World Cup was right around the corner, and all Ronaldo wanted to focus on was winning his country the goal but all anybody else could talk about were his health concerns. So, he came up with the perfect distraction. I remember I had a little injury and everybody was talking about that injury. So I came to training with that hair, everybody was talking about the hair and forgot about the injury. So, that helped me a lot in that time. And even though this haircut seemed like he was just trying to become a meme, which it did, it made everybody, including Ronaldo, forget about his health issues and instead clown his hair. So he was able to play the game with no pressure and carried his team to victory while looking like a famous cartoon. You know what I called it? I called it the Illuminati haircut. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think there was some sort of secret power as to how you won. You know. Dude really said that. The haircut was weird, but it definitely ain't as weird as what footballs used to be at number three. Today, I'm sure you think it's normal to be kicking this around. 
And what if I told you nearly 200 years ago? They used heavier leather balls like this. I mean, it doesn't seem too odd, right? Well, the sport goes way further back. And what they used during ancient times is scary. It's said that during Aztec football games, the competitions would get brutal because each team's lives were on the line, literally. And if your team lost, well... It has been suggested that the losing team's sacrificed skulls or whole heads were used as balls. If true, it would have likely served a ritualistic purpose. Uh, and just like that, I ain't ever asking anybody to give me head again. But for real, footballs did kinda improve after that, when kids began... Blowing animal bladders up like balloons and kicking that? Alright man, now I've seen it all. Like, I never thought I'd be so thankful for balls, man. At least for the last World Cup, the most technologically advanced footballs in history were created. They had motion sensors, offside detections, stat tracking, like, the balls were so advanced, they'd send data 500 times a second to a room full of refs who could make calls without even being on the field. But would the tournament have even happened if they knew the event would kill thousands of people at number two? See, World Cup 2022 wasn't what you thought it was. The tournament was being planned 13 years ago to become the biggest football event of all time. And even though many wondered why a small country like Qatar became the lucky ones to host, it's all because they promised to build the craziest stadium in football history. Now don't get me wrong, this place looked f***ing insane, because it needed to be. The expected number of fans showing up was predicted to be 1.5 million people, more than half of Qatar's entire population. So just to accommodate that many more bodies, the entire area also needed to be revamped with villas, hotels, and even cruise ships. But the hard labor that workers were forced to do was inhumane and made headlines everywhere. Allegations of human rights abuses are also part of the story surrounding this multi-billion dollar sporting event. Labor advocates say migrant workers who built the massive soccer stadiums endured unsanitary conditions in extreme heat. Injuries and deaths have been reported. Apparently migrants were forced to complete tasks in 122 degrees where there was barely any water or food. And workers not only couldn't take breaks, Officials even held their passports and made it impossible for them to leave the country before the job was done. Things were kept quiet, because only 37 deaths got reported as related to building the stadium. But then the number got bumped up a bit. What is the honest, realistic total, do you think, of migrant Numbers. workers who died from, as a result of what they're doing for the World Cup in totality? The estimate is around 400. And after this, eventually news broke that since the World Cup was announced, over 6,000 workers died. Damn, something's gotta change. Cause if football fans knew what was going on, they probably would've went crazier than the time a crowd tried burning a football team alive at number one. That went down here. Cause the fans knew Saint Etienne needed this win. Otherwise, their club was gonna suffer one of the most embarrassing things a club could deal with getting kicked out of their league and sent to a lower division. So with the game tied up, all the club had to do was not let this man score. And well... Berama Toure, netted as he did against Sochaux in the previous round. Disaster for Sonte. Uh, there's fans chucking lit flares at a football team's locker room. The, the stadium's on fire. I need police. I need firefighters. I need a goddamn SWAT team. Hurry! Simplement le dégoût. Aujourd'hui, des enfants qui ont été gazés, c'est insupportable. C'est plus du sport, c'est des. Ça nous passe rien les Bordeaux, bon ben. Mais moi, je les comprends les supporters. Moi, je viens de Dunkerque pour les supporter. Là, ce soir, on est tous écœurés. Uh, yeah. The situation got that out of control. Fans and police officers fought till the end. Players were injured. Even the stadium got completely destroyed. So this became one of the most violent losses in football history. But everybody makes mistakes. Even Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar have. And it cost them millions. Supercars getting totaled, buying illegal things, getting robbed at gunpoint. You just heard 20 things you didn't know about football, but I still don't know why you haven't clicked this video. It's insane. Click it.